Hi and welcome to this week's midweek message, which is called Evaluating Our Walk with God. Well, if you're a parent, then you know what it's like to have little people and the excitement and the adventure of them taking those first little steps. You're across the room and you call their name and they take those first little steps towards you and it's just such an exciting adventure. And then, you know, life is about walking. I wonder at this stage of life, whether you're young or middle-aged or more senior, are you a power walker? Are you a fast walker, a slow walker? Do you enjoy uh, walking in the outdoors at all? Maybe you enjoy visiting the mall and walking through the mall. But there's all kinds of different styles, different approaches. You see families out walking together, mums and dads, um, walking with little ones. It's a kind of a slow walk. Or sometimes you see power walkers really strutting out their stuff. Guys, groups of guys, groups of ladies. All different kinds of walking in this life and I'm because you know I really enjoy surfing there's uh, longboarders who walk up and down a surfboard which is just amazing I'm not so good at that I have to confess but our relationship with God really is described as a walk in the Bible we've got some great walkers like Enoch in the Old Testament who just walked and walked and continued walking until they were in heaven which is just amazing we've been learning on Sundays from the the Thessalonian church, a young group of believers in the faith, just a year or two in their journey of faith, and they had a good, strong, steady walk with God. Well, what did it look like? Um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 says, this is what a strong, steady walk with the Lord looks like. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you. In Christ Jesus. Now that is his general specific, uh, sorry, his general will for all of those who walk with him. And we can see that for these believers, um, this was going pretty well, but Paul comes alongside them and says they can even do better. Paul, it's amazing that he's writing this because there was a stage in his life when he was not walking with God at all. We know that. In fact, he was walking away from God. Acts chapter 9 tells the story. Meanwhile, Saul, Paul, he had two names, one Greek, one Hebrew. Saul was breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, that's the Jesus way, whether whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. Note the specifics of God's will. So he's walking away from God. Um, he believes God is in it, but he's persecuting the Jesus way. And his walk at that stage, we could say, was arrogant was boastful, was self-centered, self-righteous. But God meets him on that Damascus road as he so often meets so many of us and he humbles Saul, brings him to his knees and blinds him for a while. And then this poor guy Ananias has got to go and meet with him, which he does. And Paul's life is changed. So from walking away from God, hurting God's people, he now turns towards God and walks with God and his people. I think a healthy walk with God is a companionship with God, but it also have re has reverence. So a reverent companionship, a walk with God. And in this, this reverent companionship, we discover what it is to be joyful always, to pray continually, and to give thanks in all circumstances. That's just amazing. Isn't it? That is a, a healthy, strong steady walk with God. The text goes on in verse 19. Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. So this has to do with the specifics of God's will in our lives, the specifics of where he wants us to turn, which way, this way or that way in our walk with God. So I believe the text is saying that we should expect God to speak to us all the time from his word, 
We should expect him to speak to us from his creation. And we should expect occasionally for him to speak to us through people. That's the being open to prophecy that comes to us sometimes through his servants, through people. And um, it is more occasionally than his word, uh, which is very specific and all the time. The Holy Spirit here is depicted as fire. Don't quench the Spirit's fire. I remember on the farm where I grew up that to go and work with the guys in the orchard or having a team out there, sometimes in the middle of winter, they would have a mobile fire with them. Just a little, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a little small drum with holes in the side and then they would make a fire on the inside. And I, I know that when you, you left the guys there, and I don't blame them at all, because it was cold and rain, they would huddle around that little fire in the orchard for a good period of time, trying to warm themselves. So fire gives us warmth. Fire purifies. Fire spreads. The Holy Spirit fills us, sends us out, um, convicts us of our sin, never condemns us. So discovering his specific will in our walk has to do with that. Don't quench the Spirit's fire. Be open to prophecy. And um, then we walk joyfully with him. We are able to give thanks continually with him. This is a very personal relationship, a personal walk with God. Lastly, verse 23. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at his coming. There's that theme of Thessalonians, the return of Christ. What's he expecting his return? To have believers that have a steady, strong walk with him. Those who have learned to pray continually, not to quench the spirit's fire, to love one another, to give thanks in, not for all circumstances, but in all circumstances. Verse 24, the one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. It's lovely to be on a trail and to have a clearly marked trail. So you know, a red trail, a blue trail, or a yellow trail, whatever you're walking on, and you see the clear markings. Well, Jesus wants us to walk like that. He wants us to walk with clarity, with steadiness, and a sense of spring, a sense of joy in our step. I wonder if it's time for you and I to evaluate our walk with God. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Lord, that it's you that calls us by grace into this walk. It is you that sustains us in this walk. It is you that will ensure that we get to heaven one day with a steady, consistent walk with Jesus. God bless you, friends, and we'll chat again. Goodbye.